peace and freedom, and grace be with you. Uh, welcome, gentlemen and ladies, to an extremely special episode of Hard Fire, uh, where we're going to talk about issues relating to one of the most important events of the last five years, 9-11. Um, let me set this up correctly um, from a certain perspective. Um, in AD 64, uh, the Emperor Nero um, had a problem. He didn't like the popularity of the rising Christian religion. And some historians say his solution was pretty radical. He had his men set fire to the capital city of his empire. And uh, he, he did this not to fiddle while Rome burned, uh, as the old phrase goes, but in order to actually blame the fire on the Christians, in order to turn public opinion in his kingdom and empire against them, which basically succeeded. Uh, from that particular situation to uh, the Reichstag fire to the Gulf of Tonkin and other real or alleged incidents uh, comes the concept that government frequently engages w in what is called an inside job, where it stages or influences events or allows certain events or disasters to happen to provide a pretext for supporting whatever policy they're trying to promote. Uh, many people believe several events or, or disasters are really, in fact, false flag operations or inside jobs. And many people now seem to believe that 9-11 itself was a kind of inside job. Uh, I have in front of me like a poll from Zogby that came out this month saying 42% of the American people question the official story about what happened that day. Here to discuss this uh, matter and ramifications and counter perspectives are Sam Sloan, who is the Director of Media Relations for the Manhattan Libertarian Party, and Ron Wick, who is a contributor to the American Thinker, in perhaps a great American thinker himself. <laughs> well, um, well, what about this, Sam? Um, why do people have concerns or questions about 9-11 here four and a half to five years after the fact? Well, let me tell you what my concern is. Mm -hmm. My concern is that people, you hear it all the time, that the Muslims, quotes, the Muslims blew up the World Trade Center. Mm -hmm. The Muslims did not blow up the World Trade Center. There is no evidence of any kind, none whatever, that the Muslims blew up the World Trade Center. I, I, there's no proof that the people who blew up the World Trade Center were Muslims or of any kind. It's, it's just a completely bogus story. It's a story being perpetuated by the religious right who supports George W. Bush and got him elected. People who didn't like Muslims to begin with, this, this thing comes along and says, Oh, well, it was the Muslims who did it with no evidence at all. I'll give you an example. Now, I was happened to, it happens that I was born an mm -hmm. Episcopalian, okay? Mm -hmm. If I had blown up the World Trade Center, would they say, oh, the Episcopalians blew up the World Trade Center? Mm -hmm. If, if uh, a Baptist blew up the World Trade Center, would they say that the Baptists blew up the World Trade Center? Uh, if if, if a, a, a member of the British royal family mm -hmm. gets, assa gets assassinated by the Catholics, which happened? Well, they're not necessarily saying the whole uh, race or the whole group did something, but they are alleging that certain people who did this particular act or were involved in it uh, met a certain profile, and you're saying you're even disputing the specifics of that. Yes, of course, because there's no evidence that that the, that the people involved. I mean, even assuming that the people that they named uh, the 19 supposed hijackers were the ones that did, there's no evidence that those people are Muslims. Now, let me go a little bit further into that. People don't seem to realize that, uh, just assuming that they're from Saudi Arabia, did you know that 20% of the population of Saudi Arabia is not Muslim, and the same of the United Arab Emirates, and even in Iraq and Syria and, 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 and Lebanon used to be majority mm -hmm. Christian? Okay. There, there isn't, and uh, Egypt is 20% Christian, mm -hmm. and, and uh, there's a lot of, uh, oh, they mostly moved out, there's a lot of Jews living in mm -hmm. Iraq and Iran, a big, big Jewish population in those countries. Uh, how can you say even if you assume, if you have identified the, the people correctly, how can you say what religion they were or what their basis uh, for, there's no evidence yet been produced. All right, I want to let Ron in here because you're talking from the perspective of a believer who's concerned about your faith being I, defamed by its association with that. I'm not talking about a believer, I'm talking about evidence. Where is yes, the evidence? The, that's what you're concerned about. And, um, but he's concerned about it from the point of view of, uh, of a kind of a skeptic. Could you explain um, what you're skeptical of and why, and what is a skeptic? Well, first, John, I, I would like to uh, express my gratitude to Hardfire for inviting me back to, uh, to Bloviate once again. Mm -hmm. And tonight, I guess we'll find out if I can hit the curveball. A um, few things. The idea that 20% of Saudi Arabia is not Muslim, uh, I can't imagine what the source for that statistic is. Mm -hmm. 
Certainly, according to the World Almanac, Saudi Arabia is 99% Muslim. Uh, I didn't compile the book, so mm -hmm. I can't, uh, <laughs> I have no way of uh, verifying their figures. Uh, you, you mentioned Nero. Uh, that struck me as, as kind of an interesting parallel because uh, the city of Rome in 64 AD was not a city by modern standards. It mm -hmm. was a sprawling collection of, of wood shacks. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, a conflagration would spread very quickly. There's simply no way of controlling it. There's no way of pumping water. So the fire would get out of hand and destroy most of the city. No one could do a thing about it. Now, mm -hmm. most historians have felt that since Christianity in the mid-first century was not a very large sect. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's doubtful that Nero had any particular reason to single out the Christians. What seems more likely is that having seen the city devastated by these fires, now you have an unruly populace. People have no mm -hmm. homes. They have uh, no food. They're, they're literally out in the streets. Mm -hmm. What does the ruler require? Well, he requires a scapegoat. Mm -hmm. I mean, it seems so much more plausible to me that, you know, this fire occurred, as fires frequently did in Rome. This was a particularly widespread one. Now Nero has to simply quell the angry mob and, you know, well, let's blame it on the Christians. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean the Christians did it, and in fact, almost nobody thinks they did. Mm -hmm. Now, this dovetails into my, my main interest here, which is uh, skepticism mm -hmm. broadly construed. The idea of being a skeptic is not to say no. It's, it's not to mm -hmm. deny. Uh, the idea of being a skeptic is, is a little deeper. You want evidence before you accept something mm -hmm. is true. You require that an explanation be logical. Yep. Now, so far, what I've heard from the 9-11 cons conspiracists is a, a hodgepodge of internally inconsistent theories. Uh, they take a scattershot approach and they, they throw out one theory after another. And when you try to connect them all, mm -hmm. they, they fall apart. It's like a jigsaw puzzle where you insert this piece and the other piece pops up. I can cite a few examples. But before you do, let me point out that it's part and parcel to a lot of these discussions involving controversies that involve what the government might be involved in. Sure. And, and, and that it, that lot of the evidence and data that could be analyzed independently is not available to the investigators because it's been held by the government investigators. Sometimes the government has disposed of the evidence, like taking away the debris from uh, the World Trade Center or well, other such yeah, things, and, and, and they have control cases, of it. Yeah, in many of those cases, if you look more closely, you find out that uh, the evidence was there well, all please, along. Let, let's talk about 9-11. We came here to talk about 9-11. Yeah. Well, uh, you haven't sp said a word about 9-11 yet, so please stick to the subject. I mean, I okay. mean, this is an important time. We only have a few minutes here. Let's mm -hmm. talk about 9-11. I think that's, that's what I came to talk okay. about. I think that's talk a good it. idea. I think we should talk about 9-11, and let's and, do so. All right. Uh, we've heard that there were no Arab names on the passenger manifests. Mm -hmm simply untrue. Now, you can go from one conspiracy site to another, and they will mm -hmm. explain that, uh, you know, these uh, alleged uh, terrorists could not have committed this act because they weren't on the passenger manifests. Mm -hmm. If, in fact, they were not on the passenger manifests, that would be quite, quite an item, as they yeah, say. Well, uh, more clearly, what they're saying is that a lot of the personnel on the pl planes were transferred or had to be rerouted from other flights that yeah, day. which and, didn't and happen. Okay, you know, and that, that's what's been stated happen. or yeah. sourced from yeah. various stories uh, that, that now, made the claims in the first it, place. It so happens that uh, the CNN story that's so often cited on the conspiracy sites omitted the names of the hijackers purposely. Mm -hmm. uh, they said that we will list the victims and the mm -hmm. perpetrators of the crime are not victims. Now, the Boston Globe did, in fact, publish the names of the hijackers, and Almost all the major newspapers, the uh, Washington Post, New York Times, when they did cutaways of the plane, they showed where the hijackers were sitting. So mm -hmm. obviously their names appeared on the passenger manifest. We're talking There's no of, real controversy. Well, there. the controversy is that you've got a list of them that, that's yeah. been mentioned and referenced, but according to a, a number of different news sources, the individuals, several of them, were located alive in other countries. Yes, another fallacy. In, in every case, uh, that means there all the news stories you're saying that were the source of these there, there statements were false. There were six names uh, of alleged living hijackers, mm -hmm. and in each case it turns out that there was a difference in the name. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. sometimes as small as a single letter. Mm -hmm. But there was always a difference in the name of the person found to be alive mm -hmm. and the people the FBI determined were the 19 hijackers. Mm -hmm. What's interesting, Saudi Arabia didn't actually acknowledge that 15 of the hijackers were Saudis until February mm -hmm. of 2002. It took them that long to go through their own process mm -hmm. of investigation, and then they finally said, well, you know, uh, yeah, it's true, 15 of them were Saudis, but of course the, mm -hmm. the, we have no connection to this, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's an act of terrorism, and we disown it. And, mm -hmm. You know, I mean, that, that's going to go back to Sam's point. Of course, nobody thinks that mm -hmm. this, this, this heinous crime was representative of Muslims in general. Mm -hmm. uh, but then Sam would say that that's not the aura of what you feel um, from the news coverage and analysis since then, which has been um, replete with talks about Islamofascism and, um, and Wahhabism going wild uh, and other um, statements to the effect that the Muslims are out of control and have to be controlled by you know, a, a careful uh, surveillance system in the United States. And, and anti-terror program um, you know, to uh, put out any fire of terrorism that might be within the breasts of a, of a Muslim. Uh, yeah, I want to I get, get mm -hmm. around to my point. I brought here two books. You see, okay. I, bought the, I bought these books at the Strand Bookstore here. Now, this book right here is the official, authorized, words of God, authorized officially by King James himself. None other than King James made this book. And, and uh, this is the book, you have to believe it. Now, this book was made by a poor Arab out in the desert, far, very far away mm -hmm. from any place. Actually, he's believed to have been illiterate. He just spoke these words. Somebody okay. else wrote them down. Now, which book is read by most people today? The, the official uh, book by here, the King James, or this book by this Arab out in the desert? Um, well, I think Christians be reading this book and Muslims be reading that book. Well, the, answer this question. Christians don't read this book. How many well, Christians yeah. do you know who have actually read the Bible? None of them. Very oh, few. Maybe okay. one in a thousand, one in ten thousand. Every Muslim has read this book over here. Every okay. single one. No, but, I now, but let me, I haven't finished yet. Mm -hmm. The next question is, one of these books tells you to go out and kill infidels. Which book tells you, of these two books, which book will tell you to go out and kill people who do not believe in your religion? Is it this book here, the blue one, or this book over here, the green one? The green one. It's a lie. There is nothing in this book that tells you to go out and kill anybody. This book over here, the blue one, is filled with, with uh, declarations that you're supposed to go out and kill people who do not agree with your religion. You mean like this the line, love your enemies? Huh? Like, love your enemies? Uh, that's one you, of the you, phrases you, you that's you in... Take, you take one little phrase okay. out of the Bible All right, but and ignore are, the vast majority of this book. There are instances, <laughs> particularly in the Old Testament, and at times that were savage uh, all the way around, where uh, the Lord, according to the storyline of the Bible, would have... Uh, the Israelites defend themselves in their existence by preemptively going out and annihilating Canaanites or other um, enemies. Uh, but those enemies were also, of course, annihilating them, you know, in, in most of those cases. Wait, wait a second. The, 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 the Jews wandered 40 years in the desert. They were living out in the desert someplace. Eventually mm -hmm. they all died. Their successors came in and, uh, you know, the, knocked down the walls of Jericho and killed everybody mm -hmm. inside there. Uh, and that's 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 the history. And there there's rape. Uh, one woman is raped, and uh, twenty different men, and then cut her up into little pieces. All okay, kinds of things like that. Okay, the book of Judges was a lot of fun. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but but <laughs> this book contains nothing like that. And and um, people who, who, who say it does I, are simply liars. Okay, well, hold that thought. We have to well. go to a quick break, and then we're going to go right back to this topic, which seems to have turned into the as religious aspects of 9/11. Uh, gentlemen uh, and ladies, again, uh, for those of you who are paying attention, this show is in general devoted to issues relating to liberty and to promote uh, the ideals of the Libertarian Party, which in New York and in, in Manhattan and the rest of New York City um, is trying to restore freedom to New York State. We ask you to take a look at the activities of Manhattan Libertarian Party at man manhattanlp.org, um, the Libertarian Party in Queens County, uh, and also the state Libertarian uh, website at ny.lp.org uh, to catch up on all the activities, all the writings, uh, and um, special events and campaigns of the Libertarian Party. For those of you who feel that the way this conversation is turning is, is not enough information being imparted about the details of 9-11, um, I brought a little sheet of pages of uh, sites that are referencing different technical and other aspects of uh, the 9-11 truth movement, as it's called, uh, positions on various issues. 
And you can look at these articles and, in some cases, archives of, of documentaries in order to get more information about the positions being presented uh, that perhaps 9-11 was an inside job. I want to go back to this um, point about, again, perspectives on um, what the Islamic faith consists of and how that ties in with 9-11. Um, you have a book or you have a reference uh, relating to that. Yeah, I, well, I had a few questions. But, uh, let I'm me just say one thing because I, I didn't like what you last said. My point is there is no religious aspect to 9-11. It has nothing to do with religion. There is okay. no religious... Well, uh, your impact, you're, you're affected by the way it's been associated with Muslims. That's what I was, was this referring to. Yeah, but there, there is no evidence that Muslims had anything to do with 9-11. This is what I'm trying to say. It is not a religious issue at all. Okay. What they are saying, well, what, what the people are saying, by the way, I know the guy, personally, knew mm -hmm. the guy who was the mastermind behind 9-11. Very well. he, he was a student here in, in university. His mm -hmm. name is Khalid Sheikh Mohammed. He okay. was involved with my wife. He's from Pakistan. He's in jail in Afghanistan right mm -hmm. now in the United States custody. I knew these people personally. Okay. And I was trying to get the FBI to do something about them long before 9-11 came along. There's a number of whistleblowers who were trying to get the word out to stop this from happening or was trying to figure out why was it being allowed to happen in, in some cases. Um, but I'm going back to what Ron wants okay. to say about this. Yeah, yeah. I, first a quick plug. Um, a very, very useful site is 911myths.com. No dashes, no slashes, just 911myths.com. It's a clearinghouse. They will direct you to various links, including conspiracy sites. And uh, they have essays that deal with almost any question that might occur to you. Now, in the course of this discussion, uh, it will become painfully obvious that I am not a scholar of Islam. I'm, I'm going to rely mm -hmm. on this book, A Politically Incorrect Guide to Islam and the Crusades by Robert Spencer. Now Spencer is a very contentious author, and uh, I'm sure that there are Islamic scholars who would take exception to some of the statements he makes in this book. Mm -hmm. Again, um, I recommend the book as stimulating, mm -hmm. uh, accessible. But to I, the point uh, yeah. about what's... Now, um, it struck me Again, I have not read the Koran. I've mm -hmm. read it. I'm glad you admit that. So that, that's why you don't know what you're talking about. Nothing to deny. But <laughs> the Koran is organized uh, chronologically. The first group of surahs are called the Meccan surahs. Mm -hmm. And they are followed by the Medinan surahs, which tend to be longer and more poetic in mm -hmm. content. Now, there's a concept in Islam called abrogation. And a number of Islamic theorists hold that the later Medinan surahs abrogate mm -hmm. the earlier Meccan surahs. Mm -hmm. Now you'll find in the early parts of the Quran many exhortations to peace and to tolerance mm -hmm. and then you will also find the surahs that are quoted by people who are frankly expressing an animus to Islam mm -hmm. and they are the war surahs. You know, you, you smite mm -hmm. your enemy on the neck and you bind him closely. Okay. And there is an ongoing argument within Islam mm -hmm. over the nature of jihad. Okay. Uh, moderate Muslims will claim that this is a struggle, yes, but mm -hmm. it's more an internal struggle. Mm -hmm. It's a struggle to better yourself. Okay. It's a struggle towards a better life. Mm -hmm. Then there are other Muslim sects who will claim that, no, it is a literal struggle against the unbelievers. Mm -hmm. Now, to put 9-11 in perspective, it's necessary to be familiar with the writings of Saeed Khatab. Mm -hmm. He is an Egyptian, he was an Egyptian, member of the Muslim Brotherhood. He is the theorist mm -hmm. of Islamic fundamentalism. Mm -hmm. wait, I, yeah, wait a second, now wait a second. Islamic fundamentalism does not exist. There is no such thing Islamic fundamentalism. It's, it's, it might be a, used, a no, word no, wait, from, wait. from Protestantism that's been misappropriated over to describe well, yeah, certain that's parts a, actually my the point. There is we can a, call it radical Islam, if you prefer. There's that. no such thing as that either. Well, but there it is. It doesn't exist. Well, you're, you're taking a book You're saying there are no Wahhabists? Huh? I, there, there are Wahhabists, don't yeah, you? Yeah, but they're, but they're not radical. They, they are strictly observe, they, 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 in, in their view, they are strictly uh, following what they think is in the Quran. But, but uh, what he's talking about all is a book written by a Christian slandering Muslim, Muslims. All Muslims this book is think by they're following the Koran. I, I can just... All Muslims who disagree with each other think that they're being faithful to the Koran, just as Protestants, Catholics, whatever Protestant sect you can think of, they will all invoke the Bible. Yep. Now, and the there's basic a lot of room yeah. for interpretation there, and there is a mm -hmm. great deal of disagreement within the 
Islamic world. Now, right. to deny that is simply absurd. Now, what I'm getting at is Sayyid Khatab diagnosed the illness of mm -hmm. the Muslim world. He asked a very pertinent question. He said, why has Muslim civilization declined? Mm -hmm. The 12th century, I mean, before the, the Mongol invasions of the Middle East, well, Islamic civilization, we're, we're well, Sam, that. you have to let me develop the point. You can't continually cut me off. Uh, before the Mo Mongol invasions, Islamic mm -hmm. civilization was the flower of the world. Now, obviously, it's fallen behind the West. Mm -hmm. Why? Khatab says because we have lost sight of the goals of Islam. Mm -hmm. We've allowed ourselves to be corrupted. Mm -hmm. He uses an Arabic term that I can't recall right now, but its translation is corruption or depravity. And he associates that with the West, mm -hmm. specifically with Western concepts like the Enlightenment. Anything yeah. that separates man from God mm -hmm. to Khatab is depravity or corruption. Okay. That's what needs to be fought. Mm -hmm. Now, in his view, pure Islam is resisting this tendency to, to corruption. It's resisting the mm -hmm. West in all its manifestations. Mm -hmm. It's purifying Islam, returning to the unadulterated words of the Prophet. Mm -hmm. Now, this, this has resonance for people living in the Middle East mm -hmm. because they look around them, they see poverty, mm -hmm. they see despair, they see the mm -hmm. wealth of the West, mm -hmm. and they ask, naturally, why did this happen to us? But they're also seeing um, that they've been, in many cases, pulverized by bombs and by colonialism and by other things coming from the West. And I would say if uh, an average person would be more motivated to go out and do something radical if the house, their house or their neighborhood got bombed, for example, for, than uh, they heard that in some far-off land people believe differently than what they believe. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that people would be more likely to take up arms if they had seen their own relatives uh, slaughtered, and, sure. and, and that was attributable to U.S. or British or other kinds of um, activity. And that the whole idea of it, they're, they're, they hate us for our freedoms, which is one of the phrases that's been used over the last few years, is, is a canard. It, it, it is not accurate to describe what the true motivations of a lot of regular Muslims are mm -hmm. who are tempted to join in with certain violent bands um, in, in response to activity and foreign policies of the West. Um, I, I do want to say one other thing here about the, the issue of conspiracy versus non-conspiracy. 9-11 um, truth people believe they are the conspiracy debunkers because they object to the official story, which to them is a conspiracy theory, about, no what, about 19 Arabs, um, Muslims, who conspired. Muslim? Wait, have, wait a minute. Well, well, the, 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 the official story, you know, is that 19 Arab and possibly Muslims, you know, hijacked these planes and did this damage. And they think, based on their re review of the information, including all those uh, you know, studies and uh, you know newspaper articles that reference you know the coverage of this, that things are inaccurate um, about that theory, and, and, that, that, and that conspiracy theory doesn't um, hold. So it's like conspiracy bu debunkers versus conspiracy debunkers. Yes, but uh, the 9/11 uh, conspiracists have, in four and a half years, produced absolutely no credible evidence of any kind. They've made numerous assertions. They've been all over the lot, and they've yet to produce a shred of credible evidence to suggest that the story was anything other than what we've learned it to be. Well, most of the people who have looked at all these websites come to a different conclusion than you've come to, and they well, believe that there have been that there are experts on both sides, and that there there's aren't. evidence on both sides. There isn't a single scholars for 9/11 Truth, which they, I, I, I even posted something to you online a about a couple of dozen experts in that group. You have a bunch of social theorists, you have uh, English teachers, you have historians, political scientists. You Which do is not another way of saying you, you, you reject um, Stephen Jones. Uh, yes, his, you know. Stephen Jones has not responded to devastating critiques of his work. Neither has he Thomas Eager. Eager has simply said, look, uh, I'm a professor of metals. I pointed out when they claimed that there was a photo of, of molten steel that it cannot be steel. Mm -hmm. Now, everyone on the other side, guess what? Oh, you know what? It, I guess it isn't steel. But that mm -hmm. doesn't matter. We'll move on to something else. But what about this structural yeah. engineer? Um, we studied the World Trade Center, and, and it was designed for the impact of a 707 aircraft. I mean, isn't that... You know, an expert who would say, you would say, you know, would, would be uh, counted on to say that, that the uh, notion that a plane can destroy a building uh, uh, when no steel or reinforced concrete structure 
skyscraper had ever been destroyed by uh, a plane. No, no skyscraper has ever been hit by a 767 before. I mean, but there's not too much of a difference between well, a 767 and a 707. I, I've looked at the specs for both again, myself. What, what I would ask the viewer to do and is... And the, mm -hmm. the, the structural engineer I just quoted from was Les Robinson, who was one of the chief structural engineers in the construction of the World Trade Center. Yeah, but almost certainly his quote is taken out of context. Uh, I mean, no one is saying that the impact of the plane brought down the World Trade Center. They, mm -hmm. they didn't fall for roughly an hour. Mm -hmm. uh, there are very comprehensive explanations available on the NIST site, that's the National Institute of Standards and uh, Technology, mm -hmm. uh, NIST.com. Again, you can find on 911myths.com links to all mm -hmm. of these explanations. I don't want one, the one, viewer one to get quote. the idea one that of, I'm the authority. Mm -hmm. I here. Don't take anything I say for granted. Check it out. Um, one other quote about this. Um, this, this particular individual um, was, represents the people who underwrote the steel, and their view of the NIST was, quote, this story does not add up. If steel from those buildings did soften them up, I'm sure we can all agree that this is certainly not due to jet fuel fires of any kind, let alone briefly burning fires in those towers. Unquote. Well, they weren't briefly burning, and they weren't due to jet fuel entirely. Uh, uh, Dr. Frank Greening has a very exciting paper, for those who can follow the math, mm -hmm. on aluminum. And he points out that the aluminum plating, mm -hmm. uh, roughly two million kilograms of exterior mm -hmm. aluminum on the World Trade Center combined with the aluminum hulls of the plane, mm -hmm. you produce aluminum fires. Uh, we, I have uh, to stop you here because we're down to almost like uh, 30 seconds. Could you tell me um, if you want to respond to anything before we have to suddenly close okay. this program? Well, I just, I just want to say one thing. that they, They've done studies on suicide bombers. You, you, mu you must be familiar with it. And in every case, they found that suicide bombers react because their land has been taken away from them. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the, Saudi, the Saudis, assuming that they were Saudis, were objecting to the fact that the United States military has a military base in, in, on, on the land of Saudi Arabia. That's their objection. Uh, it's not, nothing to do with religion at all. Mm -hmm. It's the fact that they don't like a foreign co country having their, their uh, uh, military base. Now, of course, we know why the United States government put the mm -hmm. base on it, protect the Saudis That's from well. Iraq. Uh, on, that, on that <laughs> point, I'm sorry, you know, we, we just, this show just went by, evaporated like that. Uh, we hope you join us for a second presentation on 9-11 uh, and hope that you join us every week for another exciting episode of Hardfire.